How's everyone doing? Amen. Amen. You excited today? Yes. Are you alive today? Yes. <laughs> if you're alive, say amen. amen. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> what a presence of the Lord. You guys feel the presence of God? Guess what? It's just going to get intensify more and more as we begin to surrender, as we begin to really zero in and focus into um, to him and in, in, in our um, in our seeking him and in our hunger and our thirst for him. So uh, let's continue to, to be hungry and thirsty for God, um, not only every Sunday, but every day. Amen? It's amazing. Um, well, today there's a lot of things going on. So uh, Pastor told me, um, you know, you could just, uh, you know, if you um, have a message, you know, if there's a short, um, make it short, kind of. And I'm like, man, you know, I, that's great because I don't like long messages, but when uh, the Lord start speaking to me, you know, I have one page, and then when the Holy Spirit start downloading things, it just keep expanding and expanding and expanding. I'm like, Lord, I, I can never get to, like, a really short message. <laughs> I don't know about you, but when God starts speaking to you, you, you know, you, you can't stop him, right? You know, um, of course, you, there's always a will. If you will to not listen then, you know, you're not going to, you know, pick up everything. But I will try my best. Uh, I picked, uh, well, there's so many things that the Lord's been speaking to me. And um, I've been speaking in the same theme of kingdom builders. And it's kind of, this message is um, kind of connected to it, but I don't know if I have time to connect it. But uh, I'm going to try to do my best to keep it short. Um, it's always been a challenge for me because God is a big God. Amen. You cannot reduce him. That's what we do all the time, right? As men, we reduce God so we can, he can, um, we can fit him in our own schedule, in our own, you know, way of doing things. But just so you know, you cannot, the universe cannot contain God. He's so big. But we're going to do our best. I'm going to try to do my best to keep it short. And um, there's a lot of information, but um, I might go fast. So, so if you guys, you know, have, um, have your focus today, and I believe, you know, the Spirit will just give you the grace to pick up as fast as you can. Amen? Um, so um, this message um, came about when I was, uh, like, a couple of weeks ago, was uh, seeking the Lord uh, Recently, I think it was Wednesday, was the, uh, the holiest day for the Jews. Um, they just celebrated um, the Day of Atonement. That's the holiest, holiest, holiest day for them. The Day of Atonement is kind of uh, the, um, the end of the celebration of the Feast of Trumpets. The Feast of Trumpets starts with the celebration of their New Year. They call it Rosh Hashanah. Um, and literally means the head of the year. And so I, I start loving um, and kind of interested into um, the biblical calendar, if you will, than our Gregorian calendar, because I like to follow the patterns of the Lord as opposed to the patterns of the world. Amen. And so I like to, like, uh, so I was seeking the Lord. I know uh, Rosh Hashanah is coming up, and so I started seeking the Lord for this new year. Um, the great thing about Hebrew calendar is that they start the new year, like, in, in kind of in the last quarter of the year. So they're really, literally, head of the year. Amen? Because we don't start a new year till when? January, right? And so they're, like, one quarter ahead of the Gregorian calendar, which I love. Don't you want to be ahead, not the tail? Amen? That's what we are. We are ahead and not the tail. So the... Um, that's why it's very, uh, um, I'm excited about what the Lord is speaking for this season and this new year. So I just wanted to share this because we need to begin to shift. We've been talking about shifting, right? And, and if, you're, uh, if you're not in tune, if you're not aligned with what the Lord is doing, you're going to get left behind, right? And we don't want to be left behind. We've been, we've been catching on for so long now. The Lord is... Um, is bringing us to a speed, if you will, an acceleration in our own walk, in our, in our spirit, in, in our hearing of the Lord. So, if, you know, I encourage you guys. It's a very exciting time, very exciting season. 
because the Lord is accelerate, uh, accelerating things. And so we need to really pick up on the speed, amen? And so how many of you would like to know what's going to happen before it happens? You guys excited about that? That would be powerful, isn't it? So that's what the Lord, that, that's what we're going to talk about today. So I entitled this message, Create, Creative Birthing, or Birthing of Creativity. Um, you know, sometimes it's hard to pick a title because, it's, you know, you try to like really, um, you know, kind of have the, the full kind of message within the title, but it's hard. But so uh, I'm still... Um, like what I said, it's kind of connected to the series that the series of messages I've been speaking about. Uh, uh, last week I spoke about the firstborn pattern. It's kind of also connected to that. It's part two of that, um, and it's in the series of kingdom builder, uh, deal, uh, king, kingdom builders uh, messages. Amen. So let's uh, let's pray real quick. Let's just seek the Lord. For a moment, Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your presence today, God. We thank you that you have such a powerful uh, message for us today, Father. I pray, Lord God, that we will get just zero in to your spirit today. It really would give you all of our attention, all of our affection, Lord God, so that we will not be the same when we leave this place, Lord God. That we will pick up, Lord God, that we will um, receive the fullness of what you're trying to uh, tell us today, Father God. Open our ears to hear, open our eyes to see in our hearts of understanding. In Jesus' mighty name, everybody says, amen, amen and amen. All right, so I have some uh, um, illustration I'm going to show you guys. Um, so this year now for the Hebrew can calendar is year 5779, right? So two years ago, we, uh, we have 5777, which is very, very uh, critical time. And in, in that's when huge shift, uh, the spiritual shift has uh, started to happen. And then we have uh, 778. Um, 2018, and now it's 5779. Now we're going to focus on the last digit of the calendar because that's what speaks about the year. Um, so 9, 9 is a numerical uh, number or, or, or a numerical uh, symbol of the letter, uh, the ninth let letter of the Hebrew um, alphabet um, called Tet, which is like letter T, Tet. And um, it's shaped, um, if, if I want to show the, the actual letter, a picture of an actual letter in, uh, in Hebrew. So if we can uh, bring it up, uh, Brother Angel. So there, if you look at the, the picture of that letter, Tet, um, you see that's kind of a shape like a, like a vessel or shape like a, you know, a, a container, if you will. And also shaped like a womb, isn't it? It, it looks like it's, it's shaped like this, and it, there's something within that. Um, so that word, tet, um, speaks in the Hebrew uh, letter, like uh, uh, signifies um, what it's, uh, they call it uh, tov, in Hebrew, uh, Hebrew word tov, which is, means good. Um, and so this shape of um, this letter speaks of something uh, like a vessel, container, or a womb, which speaks of birthing, um, something, that is, something good that is within that will be delivered. And so that's what this year is all about. It's about um, something is about the birth. Something is about to be delivered. Um, so, um, like what I said, this uh, letter is connected to the word tov, which means uh, good. So, uh, one of the first Hebrew phrases I learned when we went to is Israel is uh, boker tov. It means good morning. Uh, I try to le learn Hebrew, but, uh, but anyways, that's the only thing I could remember. So, tov means good. So, tet is actually the least... Uh, letter that's used in, uh, in, in the Bible. But it's, it's, uh, it's used numerously in, in the, the first part of the Bible, which is in Genesis. 
And so the first time it appears is in the, word, uh, in the word tov, which is used numerous times during the story of creation in Genesis 1 to uh, 4, uh, when the Lord uh, said, let there be light, and there was light, and the Lord saw that it was good. And that was the first uh, um, use of this letter, good. And so, um, so like, that's in Genesis 1 to 4, if you want to read the, the whole uh, verse. And also, like any other, uh, uh, you know, uh, spiritual symbolism, there's always the other side of it. Um, like, you know, every time God do something, the enemy always counter it with, uh, you know, always destroys, right, what he's trying to create. And so this also letter or this, um, this uh, uh, letter tet is also, we uh, have a dual meaning, if you will. Um, so if we can uh, bring up the second illustration, which is the second picture, I'll show you the difference. Um, this uh, letter could also be good, um, it's also used for, um, it's the first letter that you use for the word purity in Hebrew language, and it's also the first letter that is used for impurity. Um, so there's good and evil. And so, um, so this here is also a symbolism, or if you will, it's a prophetic insight into uh, the year where God is about to birth something, is about to create something new, but also be warned that every time God does something good, right, the enemy always do something evil. He's always countering things. Do you know why? He has no ability to create. God is the creator. He creates everything. So the enemy always just um, watch and see what he's doing and twist things, right? So just, uh, uh, so I just want to warn you. So this year, if you're on the right side, you're going to get all that is good about this year. And if you're in the wrong side, you're going to have all of the opposite of this year. And so this season, and um, when I was uh, seeking the Lord about uh, the year, and I've, um, I've watched and I've listened to some of the prophetic community, and they're all, there's common theme about uh, this coming year and this coming season. And so that's what I'm I share with you, some of the common things. Everybody, of course, they have their own um, uh, additional messages to it, but I just want to bring what's, what's common in those messages. And um, so this season is a birthing season. It's a season of creativity. And uh, Patricia King, you guys know Patricia King, Chuck Pierce, and... Uh, Bob Connor, some of our modern prophets, um, they all spoke uh, um, in some line of this. Um, so the birthing season, something that is, God is creating something new in this season. And it's about whatever he's creating, um, he's about to deliver and it's about to birth. And so one, when God is birthing something new, it always seems as if the physical or natural circumstance appears to be chaotic, isn't it? Right? I know uh, for pregnant women, right, uh, they love to get to the labor part, but they know when you get to the labor part is the most probably dangerous part of the whole process, isn't it? It could be the most fearful uh, part of the process as well. It's something you look forward to, but at the same time, you're not looking forward to because of the pain that you have to go through, isn't it? All the women say amen. <laughs> okay, so it always seems as if the natural circumstance appears the opposite. So when God is creating something new and, and birthing something, uh, something different and, and, and creating something um, new in our lives, it seems like the circumstance around it is so crazy because um, the enemy wants you to um, not focus on what's about to happen. He wants you to focus on your pain so that you don't, you know, so, you, you, so you, you, um, instead of being um, uh, rejoiced in anticipation of the new thing that God is doing, you'll focus on your pain so that you, you get depressed. Right? So you get like, you know, instead of uh, being happy or joyful or seeking the Lord, you get weak. 
and you, you get out of focus, and, and next thing you know, you're totally not into what, what the Lord is doing for your life. Um, because the enemy always try to twist what the Lord is creating. So it's, uh, um, and so, and you can see in a lot of stories of the Bible, I'm going to give you some examples. Like uh, the, uh, the number one uh, example of this is the creation account, right? As soon as the Lord created the universe, have Adam and Eve, the perfect man and woman um, that he created, guess what? Enemy is right there ready to devour what the Lord has just done, right? And, and he successfully deceived them right from the beginning. And then the second, uh, uh, second example of this is Noah's flood, right? It's like the circumstance looks like it's chaotic, it's crazy. But after the flood is when the Lord recreate and repopulate the whole earth. And then the third uh, example is Moses' birth, right? When, when most of the time that the, uh, Moses um, born is so chaotic in, in, um, in his environment that, that his mom, right, has to put him in a basket and, like, put him in, in the river so that there's a lot of death. Like, they're killing the, the, the babies, right? Um, so that surrounds his birth. And then, of course, the story of our Jesus Christ, right, his birth. And, and um, King Herod, like, made a declaration and, and said, kill all, all the babies that are two and under, right? That's why they have to flee um, to Egypt. And so, um, and then, uh, and then the, another example is the birth of the church. It was chaotic. All the, the disciples were being persecuted. The disciple is, is you know, um, being killed. And out of that, the Acts, you know, remember the story in the Acts when all, they all come together in one accord and the Lord poured out his spirit, which is the, the birthing of the church. And so right now you might think that what's happening in your life, if you are into a very cr crazy situation right now, or if you are going through such a struggle and such, you know, everything is chaotic around you, just so you know that God is creating something new, birthing something, um, something fresh on the inside of you. So don't be discouraged. We're going through challenges and struggles this time because our natural circumstance may look like it's opposite of what the Lord is doing. Amen? So God is the God of creation and God of creativity. So this season, God is going to come strong um, as the God of creator. I know that we know him as a God of, uh, of our salvation, God of redemption, and, he, you know, and, and God of all so many other things. But this season, he's going uh, to um, make re uh, revelation, and a lot of things that's going to be happening has something to do with him demonstrating his creativity. His ability to create, his ability to birth something new, his ability to, um, to deliver um, something new. So you get excited about now, <laughs> the year now, right? So God is the only one who creates something out of nothing, right? Science is still trying to figure it out. Science is still trying to uh, recount the Big Bang Theory, right? They spend so billions and billions of dollars figuring out how this universe came about because it started with nothing, right? In Genesis, it says everything is void and darkness looming over the face of the earth. And guess what? God creates something beautiful out of nothing. He's the only one can do that. And he can turn, you know, his God is the only one who can turn darkness into light, right? This is the first thing he created. Let there be light. And there was light. And he called it good. And so um, he is the only one who created good out of bad situations. I don't know about you. I have so many testimonies of those kind of situations. Do you? That's why you're here, right? Each of us is a testimony of the goodness of God from being, you know, from being, uh, living a sinful life. Now we are towards um, 
drawing into the righteousness of our Christ Jesus. Amen? So, um, so he is the only one who can bring peace out of chaos. How many of you know can say that it's so chaotic right now everywhere in our political arena, in our society? It's crazy. Like every single day when I watch the news, I'm like, you know, I literally feel sick with what's happening because it's so crazy. Yet, I have the peace that passes all understanding. And he's the only one who can bring beauty out of ashes. Is that true for your life? I know it's true for me every day. I mean, look at, look at everyone. Look at different kind of beauties that got created here. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> and how many know uh, you can say that you have some ugly moments? <laughs> you feel like well, you, you're really an ugly person. But guess what? God created you. He said he, he made you wonderfully and fearfully and beautifully. Amen. <laughs> no matter how ugly you feel um, for the day or whatever your situation is, guess what? God's beauty is in you because he created you. So God creates not from what he, here's, here's the awesomeness of God, right? For, for us who who's, who's, uh, used to living in this world, we create out of the things that we see, you know, the outside influence most of the time, right? Our ideas come from what, what we see uh, on the outside of us. But God creates from within. You know, he creates from who he is. You know, uh, uh, the Bible said um, he spoke everything into being. And that's, that word that he spoke is something that came from within him. It's something that came from his heart. It's something that came from his mind and his thoughts. And so he proclaimed it. He spoke it, and it came into being. That's the, the powerful creativity of the God of creation. Amen? And guess what? Then he said that he created us out of his own image and likeness. What happened to our creativity? And a lot of times, you know, um, I would wonder uh, about this because um, many years of my life, I'm like, Lord, this, you know, I feel like I lost my creativity. I'm like, you know, I, I need to have new ideas. I, have, I need to have um, new things happening. But for some reason, I'm stuck with this old stuff over and over again, same circumstance over and over again, walking the same um, you know, mountains over and over again. But God is going to break that cycle this year. Amen? In this season, because this is the season of creativity, God is going to pour out His creative power and His creative energy on all of us. And so that's why I'm very, very excited with this season. And so God doesn't need outside influence like we do. The influence from him is coming from who he is and from within him. That's why he do the same process with us. That's why he start beginning to work on the inside of us. Because that's his nature. He doesn't need any outside influence to create things. He just goes to inside of him and bring things out of him. And that's, that's the God that we serve. And that's the God who made us and created us. Isn't that powerful? When you can create something without the influence of anything or anybody, when you can look on the inside of you and what the Lord is doing right there in, in, in your inner being, and then you create out of that. Because that's where he is, right? That's where he dwells in, in our heart, in our spirit. And so in Matthew, uh, in Matthew 12, 34 to 36, I'm just going to, uh, uh, I'm not going to go there, but I'm just going to mention the scripture. Um, it says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Guess what? The abundance of God is in his heart. And the same thing with us. He created us the same way. And that's why he, he needs to work on our hearts first. Because the Bible also talks about all the evil things and all, everything evil is also coming from our hearts, right? Because if our hearts is contaminated and in a pure, in not in a pure state, 
what we create from that is, you know, if you're going to create a mess out of the mess, isn't it? You cannot create a perfect thing out of your mess. So, you know, if you create from, some, from, from a messy situation, most likely you, you are going to, you know, create something messy. If you're, this, you know, if you're making decisions out of your, your uh, unpeaceful heart and a peaceful mind, most likely your decision will look like that. <laughs> it's going to be messy. Amen? And so he created the universe by speaking and declaring his plan and his will. That is uh, within himself is the abundance of creativity and the creation forms how from within him. And guess what? The seasons is going to be the same process. God, that's why God is doing so much work on the inside of, inside of us because he's creating something new. He's creating something different on the inside of us. So season of creative work of God, this is what this season is all about. Um, so the Lord's going to give us prophetic insight of God being the creator, like what I mentioned. God will reveal himself strongly as a creator. There will be creative miracles according to the prophets. Creative miracles. How many would like to see creative miracles? We're talking about limbs growing out of people's hands. We're talking about teeth growing out of their gums. You know, um, and there's... God has done this before. It's not like, you know, he has, but more so in this season, there's going to be such a creativity that the Lord is doing that it's going to surprise all of us. But the thing is, are you, you know, if you're willing to receive and you're, you have an open heart, the Lord will begin to um, um, stun you and surprise you with your situation as well. There's going to be new creative ways um, to solve issues. There's going to be new creative ways to uh, probably resolve relationship. So if you're open and you're ready for this something new, so don't get stuck with your old pattern. Amen? I spoke about the old pattern. That's, let's leave that behind because now God is taking us to something new. So a lot of times we, we resist changes. Isn't that true? Because we're not comfortable. It's different. We don't, sometimes we don't like different. Because it's uncomfortable. But just so you know, this season, we're not just talking about year, this year, but I think the Lord is going to be, for the season, um, it may take a few years or um, however he's going to uh, pour out his creativity um, over us and over the earth uh, this time. And so just have an open mind and open heart. Because God is a God of creativeness. Amen. A lot of times we box him, right? And, and, and well, a um, few days ago, the Lord t uh, told me, I had this conversation with him. He said, do you know why you're limited in your life? I go, why, Lord? Because you limit me. Our limitation, the things that we can do, a lot of things like, no, I'm limited. I don't have this. I don't have that. I can't be this. I can be that. Guess what? You know why you're limited? Because you limit God to do whatever he wants in you. If we allow him, if we surrender all that we are and all, the, uh, um, you know, all that we, we have in him, he'll do mighty things. But a lot of times we refuse because we like our comfortable state or we like the way we do things. We don't like his ways. Because his ways is different, is higher, right? The Bible said his, his thoughts and his ways are higher than ours. But then we want, we always cry out to him and say, Lord, I'm so tired of this. Really? <laughs> are you? So give it up. G give up your old attitude. Give up your old ways. Give up your old mindset and give up everything that is old <laughs> because it's doing something new. You know, we, we're, we're good at crying out, but we're not good at, like, letting him be in us. And so, to me, this is powerful, right? <laughs> that, and I'm like, Lord, you mean, like, if I, the more I allow you to work in my heart, in my, my, my life, the more I would see creative things around me? Isn't that powerful? 
Will, you know, and I'm like, Lord, how come I don't see a lot of miracles? Well, I personally, because I don't let God do a lot of miracles, right? You go to an opportunity to see miracles. God has just been waiting for you to actually be open so he can use you to create miracles. And I'm like, Lord, I want to start seeing, um, you know, um, this awesome and wonderful signs and wonders and miracles. And I'm like, well, you can have it if you want. If you just let me, I will. But we're so limited because we're, we limit God. We only allow him to do certain things in parts of our lives, in portion of our hearts, in portion of our soul. And the things that we, you know, were so dear to us, we keep it to ourselves and, and, and tell God, Lord, don't go there, Lord. You know, I'll, I'll keep this thing on the inside of me. Don't deal with this because this, you know, this is something I don't want to touch. But this season, I'm telling you, if you're open and willing, God is about to create something new. He's about to um, give birth and deliver you. If you've been in the same situation over and over again, this is the season when you give up things to the Lord and surrender, and he's going to surprise you with his creative power and creative energy and creative spirit. Um, see, I told you I'm going to keep it short, but it's, you know, we're out of time. <laughs> so this season, God is birthing something new in all of us. He's birthing new in the church something new in our nation. It, right now, it looks chaotic in our nation, but guess what? God is creating something new. He's creating righteousness in this nation once again. So the goodness of God is hidden within us and is about to be revealed. So it is a time for birthing and deliverance. And, and, and so I just want to repeat this because the enemy... What the Lord is doing right now, the enemy is waiting. The Bible says, you know, um, um, to Abel. He said that, you know, the enemy is crouching at your door if you don't do the right thing. The enemy is always like waiting to devour something that God is about to birth in you. And so I'm warning you, just in case, sometimes we're just so focused on, on, on this and then uh, we lag and, and not be alert what the enemy is doing. And so I, ju I just want to um, encourage you, okay, because if the Lord is doing something new in you, he might be birthing a new ministry in you, he might be birthing uh, a new career, he might be birthing um, some, a new relationship. It might create new things around you, new things within you, new attitude, new habits. Um, but just be careful because the enemy is waiting, crouching at your door. The, the Bible says he, the only thing he does is what? Destroy, kill, right? What's the other one? <laughs> Steal. Kill and destroy. That's all he's going to do every time. So this new thing that God is doing in you, make sure you, do, you hold on tight to that thing. Because the enemy is going to try to steal it even before it comes into being, right? He will destroy new relationship that you're just about to build. He's going to destroy new um, a new attitude or new habits that you're trying, uh, trying to build this year. So just know that you have an enemy crouching at your door and waiting to devour what the Lord is doing. And so let's be careful and be alert. Don't say that we didn't warn you. Amen. <laughs> and so this season, how many are excited for this season? I'm, I'm, I'm going to try to close now because it's, this is too <laughs> I have so much. Uh, but let this season, let's be open and surrender everything to God. Uh, the Bible says, you know, God did not hold back anything. And that's my uh, Romans uh, 8.31. God so loved the world that he gave his only son. He gave up his only son, meaning the Lord did not hold back anything from us. The Bible said if he gave up everything, Jesus is everything to him. 
He gave up His only begotten Son to us. How would He not give up anything else? Right? And now the difference is that God gave His all to all of us. The only thing missing is our all. Because we were not willing to give all to Him like what He did to us. And so this season, I want to encourage you. This is the time when we can give it all to the Lord and surrender everything to Him. Because guess what? That's, you know, the, the, the miracles and, and, and the creativity and the, and, and the spirit and the power of the creative power of God. You're going to start seeing it in your life. You're going to be like, you know, it's going to blow your mind. This season, if, if you're willing, if you're open. That's why I'm so excited. I'm like, you mean, Lord, we're going to have new, new things happening around us? Yes. And guess what? If you participate, because God doesn't do anything without us, right? You know why? Because he gave us dominion over this earth. Whatever happened to this earth is our responsibility. But we always blame him. Lord, why this, why that? Well, why? What did you do? So this season, we need to start stepping into who we are and what we can be in, in Christ Jesus. He's going to pour out the spirit of creativity over this season. And, you know, I don't know um, about you, but there's, I know there's like hidden um, talents and ministry that's on in, in the inside of each and every one of you. I know that you've probably been praying to the Lord, Lord, I know I have this idea. But you abandon that idea because she's like, you know, and that's not for me. But guess what? You're the one that thought about it. God gave you that idea. Not your neighbor, not your friend. You thought about that. A lot of times when I think about you know, like new inventions and things, next thing you know, because I don't do anything about it, next thing you know, it comes out in the market, right? You know how many opportunities we miss? Because we don't allow the creative power and strength of God to to um, manifest and demonst be demonstrated on the, on, uh, in us. And the uh, prophet uh, Bob Connor said, um, we should be the most happiest, the most creative, the most talented people on earth. <laughs> because guess what? We bear the spirit of the creative God. We are created in his own image and likeness. We have the power and the authority to create. And so this season, I want to encourage everyone. It's going to be an amazing season if we allow God. Amen? So how many will receive that word? I just want to invite you to stand up. We're going to pray. If there's anything that you need in your life, anything new that you've been asking the Lord, God is burning something new on the inside of each and every one of us. And so do not abort what God is about to birth in you. And so I just want to encourage you that this season is the season when we don't hold back to the Lord. If you've been holding back to the Lord all this time, all these years, I encourage you, this is the season when you give it all to the Lord. Amen?